because I hated it. <laughs> hey everyone, and welcome to a brand new, I guess we're going to call it a show, or a brand new spin-off of UCR. This is UCR Real Talk Roundtable, where you get to know us a little bit better, and we discuss the big topics. So how is everyone today? Who have we got I'm- with us? <laughs> First of all, Katie Underwood is with us today. How are you, my dear? I'm very good. I'm awesome. I've just come out of a two and a half hour um, client session doing sound and massage in Reiki. So I'm like super, super zen, which I think I'm going to need to be because we're getting real today. We're get, so. We are getting real. Mr. Jeffrey yeah. Emmett, how are you? Girl, I can't even. Like today I had to go public. I drove an hour and a half with my hand to go to the city to go shopping. I filled the Subaru up though. I really did. Um, but there was too many people for me. I didn't like it. I was like, we just had two more stores to go to, and I'm like, we got to go now. I can't do it. I was sweating in the mask. I, it's not for me. It's not for you. you you're just not going to go back to civilization, no, are you? But I sure did get on Grinder, Scruff, and all of the gay dating apps because I changed all of my profile pictures to our ads for our show. Oh, my God. Yes, you I do. Realized yeah, because guys will like go and they'll check it out, right? Because they're like, oh, we can see him, we can hear him. And usually after they hear my voice, they're like, ah, yo. <laughs> <laughs> Which is fine. Bit of, cr- bit so of cross you promotion. Go, and you're peeking in. No, you never know. Look, okay. love finds a way. And we have Miss Marie. How are you today, my dear? Oh, you know, Florida <laughs> getting destroyed down here. I'm tired. I, they, these people are taking this whole, I got some more stimulus money to a whole nother level of, you know, let's spend it all and go crazy and fake IDs. And uh, I don't even know, just just uh, people everywhere. Jeffrey, you'd have an anxiety attack. Like, seriously. <laughs> In fairness, I didn't get stimulated, so I was spending my own damn money. Oh, uh, well, true. <laughs> true, 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 true. I hear you. <laughs> well, look, at least everyone's, everyone's but, living their life. They're making up for lost time with COVID. Apparently yeah. in Florida, though, they can't afford the electric bill. <laughs> but they yeah. can afford to go out for lunch, apparently. <laughs> well, you know, the funny thing is, is in Florida, I guess COVID doesn't exist because, you know, seeing a hostess and being sat at a clean table is a foreign concept to people, I guess, since, you know, they forgot. They're just running and jumping on filthy tables. And I'm like, oh, what's the matter with you people? I'm like, sanitize, COVID, get to the hostess. Like, I'm sick of this crap. Like, so she's been one of those. America. America. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> COVID America's doesn't exist. Trump. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, we'll see. Look, at, <laughs> I guess it speaks to the human spirit how quickly things are going back to normal, isn't it? <laughs> you know? So speaking yeah. of the human spirit, we were having a little conversation um, the other day after the show, which after you see our live, which is usually the best part of you see our yeah. live that you guys don't get to see. Maybe one day when we, we when we reach um, Patreon level, we might let you behind the curtain. But um, we get chatting about some serious stuff. I think Jeff and I were on for two and a half hours after the show the other day. My ears were very sore. That's all I know. So we thought we would discuss a topic that was um, kind of near and dear to everyone's heart. Well, not near and dear, but everyone's gone through a different experience. So today's topic is going to be monogamy in the modern world. Is the one an outdated concept? Now, I know that there's a lot of different experience on this panel. So, Jeffrey, you are, what is your status at the moment as of your relationship life? My dick is dead. I'm single as shit. <laughs> there we go. That's beautiful words for the ladies. Um, uh, Katie yeah. Underwood, let's, um, <laughs> where, where are we at with you? I'll, I'll try and state my situation a little more eloquently than Jeffrey. Your um, dick's not dead? I, well, don't have one, so <laughs> not for lack of wanting. But, um, look, I'm, I'm also technically single, but my current situation is as Facebook. The only, the only category it's complicated. That would, would be it's complicated. But actually it's not accurate because it's not complicated for me. It's very simple. I understand where I'm at. But... Um, but winding back, I have practiced monogamy in the past and I can do that. Um, much different to what people believe about bisexual individuals that we're not capable of monogamy. That is simply not true. We're just as capable of commitment um, as anyone else. So I've been 
monogamous, I've been married, I've been separated, I've been single, I've been partnered, I've been in an open relationship, I've been in a closed relationship um, and I guess the most accurate way of describing what I'm doing now is a version of polyamory, uh, which is where I'm allow myself to experience love with more than one person. <clears throat> Not necessarily at the same time, but that's a whole other thing. Um, yeah, so girls having a good time, later. basically. I'm I'm a I'm an independent woman, so That's I'm enjoying my life. It. And Marie, you are famously married. <laughs> as for I'm some married. Of the yeah, as I'm mar yeah. As for some married. Of stories. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I mean, you know, we've been married. Uh, we just had our seven year anniversary of being married. We've been together for over thirteen years. Um, I have a six, almost seven year old stepdaughter. So obviously there was a little hiccup in our relationship where he got someone else pregnant and we were able to work through it. And now I help co-parent and raise her, as you can see behind me, you know, <laughs> and it works because she got remarried. It was tough when she was single, but when she got remarried and we really like him and we work together as four adults. You know what I'm saying? We help each other. We're there for each other. And, you know, we have some other support staff, like my sister, her mother, you know, for emergencies. But we try to figure it out between the four of us, you know, so she doesn't have to be in daycare or anything like that. Mm. So Th that's awesome. I think it's really amazing when you um, have successful co-parenting relationships. I think when there's kids involved, that's like to me, that's the most important thing about anything mm -hmm. that I do is that the yeah. father of my children and I have a good friendship, a good relationship, and our kids feel safe and secure. So that's just fantastic to hear you're doing that. Yeah. And she makes it easy because she's easy to love. So, you know, I'm. Yeah. it's good. So we're going to jump back in the way, way back machine, kids. Mm. Jump back to your to your teenage self. Oh, we're going to we're going to talk about we're going to talk about first love oh. to start with. Mm. So <laughs> I think everyone everyone remembers their um their first real real you know heart stops can't stop thinking about the stomach flipping romance no matter what it was mm -hmm. compare that to today what would your young self think about yourself today take a second have a thought because. I had had a very good conversation with um, with a married friend of mine, and she said she was like, "I would never have imagined myself here." Like she go, uh, she was traveling the world. She was going to do this, 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 and this, and then she settled down. She's got two, or three kids now. Three kids, happily married, doing the house, doing the dog, doing all that kind of thing. Mm. I think it's I think it's very interesting to look at the span, even of a, of your um, romantic life, and go, oh. It took a turn, didn't it? And what that, yeah, what that could teach you. Who wants I to think go first? I'll go first. <laughs> you want um, to go first? <laughs> out of my way, bitches. Um, go, Katie. <laughs> Get it. My six, my sixteen-year-old self was still very much um, had bought the myth of the one, and, and I shouldn't call it the myth. I think for some people, the one is possible, but. Um, that Disney princess myth, I think, was very much front and centre in my mind, that the right way to go was to find um, a male partner, um, so an opposite sex partner, and that ideally uh, we would be married and have a house and have 2.5 kids and a dog and, and you call that a life until you retire and die. So, you know, that was <laughs> the normal <laughs> life that had been presented to me in television and from my parents and the model of a version of my own family and thinking that I had to replicate that and that would mean that I had had a successful partnership. Um, but, yeah, to fast forward and look at my life now, I think it's there's almost no frame of reference for it. Um, and I'll say for me that the big change about what I need from relationships is totally different before kids and after kids. So obviously mm -hmm. before kids, even though I'm a bisexual woman, which means I could fall in love with a man or a woman at, you know, at any one time, for me to most easily have a family, partnering with a man was kind of my objective. You know, it's not to say it can't be done, obviously, um, but I felt like that was the easiest path. But once I had my kids, suddenly I really didn't need a man 
anymore yeah. in that way. And, it, <laughs> and ever since, sorry guys. <laughs> so ever since then, I why it's my, called the real talk round table people it's real talk <laughs> yeah my um, i mean don't get me wrong i love men obviously uh, as people and in other ways but um you know since <laughs> having my kids it's like well i don't need you for that anymore and actually i know how to change a light bulb and i know how to prune my own garden and i'm used to putting my own bins out like honestly i don't need that i don't need men for that so it's kind of swayed me more over to the other side probably in the last nine and a half years <laughs> Um, but yeah, very different. I don't think my 16 year old would even know what to think about what I do now because the whole mode is totally different. What about you, Marie? You can go next. Um, I obviously had my daughter when I was 15. So, you know, to me and looking back at her dad and we met when I was 13 years old, you know, we had a kid by 15 and it's, it wasn't love. I think it was a young infatuation because, you know, if you don't know someone truly or you don't live with them or you're not your adult self, how could you truly love somebody? So I can honestly say like my husband is the first person I actually love because there's complete comfortableness between each other. You know, like it, he sits in the bathroom while I take a shit and talks to me and it's nothing you know i can sit on his lap <laughs> while he's pooping and it's nothing and there's no weirdness there's no it's not uncomfortable it's you could be sick and look your worst and that person is like it's totally fine because i love you you know what i'm saying but when we were kids like oh my god it's, it was so trivial and stupid and my daughter's father was like such a piece of crap so <laughs> to me i'm like yeah, I think I, you know, getting away from all that and finding somebody and realizing, oh, wow, I never really did love anybody because I was never truly comfortable with anyone being who I am and being myself. So I think he's and he knows and we've talked about that. He had a girlfriend who he was infa infatuated with. And he's like and I look at her now and think, oh, my God, what was I thinking? He's like, but when I was 21. I was like infatuated with the girl. And, you know, I think it's you grow up, you get older and get in your ways and it's just different. Like you feel different towards the other person that you're with. Jeff, I know you got a lot to say, so. Well, I actually, uh, Stevie Poo, uh, you're the only one that didn't talk about where you're at in life. I'm the moderator, I'll tell you later. Listen, Whoopi. No, no, Whoopi, it don't work like that. You, what's your situation? I'd say oh, compromise. Me. Um, I like to call it terminally single. Oh, <laughs> Girl's too busy. Girl's too busy for that at the moment. Like you know, I got two jobs. I got a. I've got. I got a podcast now. You know, that you know needs <laughs> that needs attention. So, I think I, I agree with Katie. I think it's um. Look, you get what you need when you need it. Is basically the way I I look at it and. Anyway, that's enough about me. Jeffrey, <laughs> back to you. My 16-year-old self would probably wonder what the hell I'm doing, right? Like, <laughs> it was so different then. I went to Catholic school my whole life. Um, I don't know that I was ever really in the closet. I feel like I kind of came out, you know, singing somewhere over the rainbow. I, I <laughs> loved my ruby slippers, like played with mm -hmm. Barbie. So it wasn't like a secret. But the thing that I feel is so different is back then when, you know, you're hooking up or whatever, it was exciting. It was something you weren't supposed to be doing because, you know, gay, Catholic church, not good, not good. So it made it exciting and thrilling. And then you come out of the closet fully and it's like, oh, well, I kind of took the fun out of this. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it just—you're it, not sneaking around. You're not hiding. You know, the, the the neighbor's dad's not walking in as we're like messed up on the floor trying to throw things together, and he's like, "What the hell's going on in here?" You know, like it was fun. It was exciting. We had to sneak around, and and then it, it wasn't fun anymore. Maybe and you should like I, in your in your role play, you could like pretend to be straight. And like, <laughs> yeah. That, being gay on the side, maybe that would like amp up the excitement. Pussy is for me. 
Oh, thank, you, thank you. Okay, Listen, but here's the thing. Ever do that again. It's not possible for him. It's not. He likes Wait, to come to my house because he wanted to play with my Barbies. So it's not possible for him. But here's the trippy thing. I also never thought that I'd sleep with women, which I have. And after my divorce, I slept with a few. Or, you know, like females that were becoming male that had the top surgery. And that always like shocked people. But even when I was younger though, if you're out to girl, I'm like, all right, well, either way it's gonna work out. So you know. Um, oh, we have a late <laughs> cover joining us, guys. We do. <laughs> oh hey. Oh, oh, hey. Oh, hey. Oh, hey. Oh, and Judy. I didn't think I would make it, but I did. Yay. Well, you've just you've just come at a great time. We were asking the question. So Vera. Yes. You are, um, you are, oh, well, actually, <laughs> how much do you want to say? Are you single at the moment, Vera? <laughs> I am. I'm yeah. perpetually single. Post COVID. <laughs> See, Vera, Vera's terminally single with me. It's all good. We live, <laughs> we live it, we live it out. So we're talking about, um, our 16 year old self, the one that, or, oh, oh, you know, your, your young love, your first love, and going, ah, oh, that moment. What would that they moment, think of actually, me? I didn't have that moment till I was thirty. Well, there you go. What? What? Really? So, what does your thirty-year-old? What does really? your thirty-year-old self think about where you're at now? Could you? Could your thirty-year-old thirty-year-old self imagine Vera today? Uh, probably not. My thirty-year-old self was determined to have children. I was so in that procreation mode. I think I would be totally stunned and amazed to find out that. I'm at the other end of my life with no kids. <laughs> but uh, if I had any, I wouldn't say advice, that. You've got the cast of UCR. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> yeah. If I had any words of advice to give to myself, it would be more sex. And let my body anxiety rule me a lot. And I know I mm. see fatter women, uglier women getting laid all the time, and I think. God, why did I not have the confidence to just go for it? <laughs> why are you can still do it now? You can still have yeah. sex. I, no, oh, no, there's nothing know, stopping but you. But I, that mad, passionate rush to, oh, fuck. I blew it. <laughs> they have, I they it. have medication for that. They have age, medication for that. When you get to my age, it's like, yeah, I could do this. Yeah, that was nice. <laughs> when you're 30, it's like, yes, fuck me on your son's fire truck. Oh, <laughs> oh no. You know what I mean? Yes. <laughs> I don't know. The, gr the girls at work tell me they just drink a lot of wine and then they suck some dick and have a lot of sex. That's what their suggestion is. <laughs> I guess you should try that. Like She's like, I didn't know this was going to be so graphic. We had this conversation this morning that one husband drove all the hungover girls to work, so he had to get a dick sucking later. That was pretty much oh my, my conversation. Oh, my God. Was, yeah. Beautiful <laughs> okay. this is, and, this is, and one girl said, are you offering to suck my husband's dick? Because you can go ahead, because I'm not doing it. So it was one of those. I like, yeah. This does uh, tie into to Katie a little bit, because it really was sound meditation and centering myself that made me more aware of the fact that I wish I got laid more. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> nice save there, Vera. You had to worry for a minute. I'm I'm like, going, we, what? we went from cock sucking as currency to that ties into Katie. I'm like, what the? I don't know where I was going know. either. I was nice. a little worried. Nice. It, was, it was like, well, we made it two shows in before she quit. We're good. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, the thing I say about, like, so the first guy, right? He ended up going to prison. I got him into Catholic Your school. First we, guy? Yes. He ended up going to oh. prison. And it was nuts, right? He got out of prison. I was already in Joe. I had lost a bunch of weight, whatever. You know, I was in one of my Kirstie Alley phases. And he totally still wanted to like meet and hook up. He was like with a girl got pregnant. He was still messaging me. I finally had to block him. It was crazy. And two, he wasn't real happy when he found out I had hooked up with his other cousin. It was just that girl. girl. I got a thing. I, well, I have a thing for straight guys or married guys or guy, you know. I don't want. See now, that's that's a totally different story. Well, it's set yourself up to fail. Location though, I didn't want love. I 
wanted that excitement because what you missed is changed brains for like a few months <laughs> back when we first I, met <laughs> yeah like i wouldn't take i don't you know like even with married i didn't take my shirt off like it didn't matter how skinny i got i was always very body figure so it definitely affected oh yeah my sex body life. anxiety drove yeah. me my, Listen, my you know what I tell my husband? If I don't feel like shaving my legs, I don't care if you feel like you're getting set on fire. I'm still going to rub those bitches all over you. Don't care. <laughs> if I don't feel like shaving, I'm like, if I don't feel like wearing makeup, I'll give a damn. You're going to just get over it. And he's fine with it. it so it I think the legs, it was the booty <laughs> belly. <laughs> I think what Katie had said earlier um, about, you know, buying into the whole Disney princess thing and monogamy, and right? There's this picture of what oh. life is supposed to look like. And for me, I agree with that. Like, I feel like we were set up to fail by watching all these movies that was Absolutely. like, somebody's going to come and rescue you. They're yes. going to save you, and life's going to be all better. You're going to magically fall in love, and that's not what life is like at all. No. And as I got older... <laughs> And I, I kind of went with, like, Katie, right? Like, I decided I don't know that a relationship is even for me. I like being alone. I don't want to have to deal with somebody. I don't want to have to care about their feelings every day. Because I'm selfish, right? I've got three kids to look after. I don't have time to worry about a grown adult who's having a bad day and just wants my attention to stop. It's not healthy to me. And I'm not good at it. I'm not good at being married. I, I was bad, like, and it really, at I, the end, I was ready for an open marriage because it was just not good. It's because you set yourself up for failure. Like, marriage well, is work, but you can just be, like, well, half listening to a person and be like, uh-huh, oh, sorry, honey, sorry you had a bad day, and just move on. Like, it's not that hard, seriously. My husband has a bad day well, every no, day. Well, no, and I'm not saying, like, <laughs> I'm not saying that, but I mean, I need my alone time, right? So i <laughs> Whatever, and I want to go upstairs and be left alone. I don't want to have to explain to somebody. <laughs> no, I'm like, no, I'm I just sorry. need a minute. <laughs> like, I couldn't imagine somebody coming to the bathroom while I was in there. Like, I, I literally would throw anything I could get my hands on. You know, that's <laughs> no, leave me alone. Like, leave me alone. You don't need to be in the bathroom while I'm doing this. <laughs> I, I that's it. Oh, sorry. Something I want to comment on here with about that and and what Marie said, it's like it's fantastic. You're in a you know a, clearly a great relationship where you guys want to be together or apart the same amount. And I think Jeff, if yeah. people like you and me, it, um, I've read a couple of books on attachment theory, which talks about you know you're either got an at different attachment styles. Basically, the level to which you want to be with someone or independent from someone. And I think from what I've seen and what I've experienced, one of the keys to having a successful committed relationship, whether that's monogamous or open or something else, is that you have the same attachment style. So like what Marie's describing is a very um, yeah. closely attached bond and clearly her partner is the same and so they're both satisfied. But if you get someone that has that sort of attachment style with what I'm probably, and you probably are, Jeffrey, which is an avoidant style, which is we really yes. need our own independence and our own alone time. doesn't mean that we love our partners any less, right. but the way that we engage with them is very different. So the key for people like us to be successfully partnered is we need to find someone with that same sort of attachment style that's like 70, 80% of the time you're living your life, I'm living mine, and then occasionally we come together and we share that and we enjoy it. Yes. But we're not yeah, yeah. so closely attached all the time you know some people thrive that way but for people like you and i i'm like ah, get me out you know so yeah I think give me the firefighter fun. give me the firefighter they work they're <laughs> home for 48 hours usually working yeah, yeah. they're <laughs> gone for 25 that 24 that's my husband every third yeah. day i have the house to myself the tv oh, to see? myself and he's gone so then there we have to go. each other there's, and there's then the you know and i work yeah. five days a week well, I yeah. agree with Jeff, what Jeff was saying earlier, though, about how we are set up to fail. Mm. I was the ultimate princess girl. I was waiting for Prince Charming. I was, I, you know, oh, <laughs> you're not the right one. I'm sorry. Oh, no. <laughs> Shy retiring me. And then when I found what I thought was the one, I just threw myself into it wholeheartedly. I was like, I was there. Mm. I was there for him. I was there for his mother. I was there for his kids. I was in it to win it and when it all blew up in my face it totally blindsided me and I'm i think like, ah, i can't 
can't do this anymore. <laughs> you know. Maybe when I was younger, I think I, I would have done that. But even when I was getting married, you know, we waited six years. Mm-hmm. I, I remember before, like, I didn't want to do it. And I, I was I kept saying, what's wrong with me that this isn't enough, that he's not enough? And, like, he seemingly loves me so much. What is wrong with me that this, I, I can't be happy? That mm-hmm. I was convinced that there was something wrong with me because nobody ever told me it was okay to be a loner or that you didn't have to be with each other constantly. So this nobody is where talks I feel- about that. This is where I feel sorry. I, I don't know sorry. Actually, that might be the right word. But you see these older couples, like we're talking past 50, like in their 60s, 70s, eight, like 80s, that they're obviously together because that was what was expected of them in and their life like, by their parents. They hate each other. You can tell. Like the venom. Yeah. Because it's, it's, my what, parents. Like, my would you not? Would you, there's got to be... There's got to come a certain, like, I my parents split up when I was 18, um, but there's got to come a certain time when your personal happiness matters more than what society expects, right? But that was a different generation. Though. I know, but if, like, I can't well, imagine the seeing the world, tra- but they've seen the world change around them as well. Right. But it was like, also that generation, just the generation that felt that if you were gay, you had to hide it your whole life. Yeah, of course. You come out, you know. Really I, had a, I had a great aunt and uncle. She was a lesbian. He was gay. And they were together because it was taboo to do it. On my mother's <laughs> side. My mother's side. My mother's side. My mother's side. <laughs> my mother's side. I was like, what did I miss? I wait on, hold on. I wait on a lot of people who are retired elderly people at my establishment. And when I see one of them die, because it happens, they're older, that other person is heartbroken and lost. I mean, we had a couple and she passed away. Not even a year later, he passed away. And you could tell he just, he'd said, I miss her. I I, I just don't even know how yeah. to be without her. You know, like, so I think that they probably, that's a long time to get on each other's nerves. I agree. <laughs> but I've, I've seen it to where, they're, they know, you know, she likes this. Oh, and he likes this. And, oh, you know, and they're so sweet and it's cute together. And I'm sure they have their struggles. But when one, I mean, I, I'm i crying at work hugging people because we lost, you know, he lost his wife and we lost a friend, you know, and it's just like, and you feel that heartbreak and it's just like the look on their faces, it's just terrible, you know? So I, I, I know that generation, it's felt they had to stay together, but a lot of them, I feel like, they, you know, they really loved each other. I think it's definitely a testament to that generation, though, that, and as you mentioned before, Marie, you know, good relationships, they do take work. They don't just happen. You don't just fall into it and everybody magically knows what to do and what to say. I, You know, having been married in the past for 10 years, you know, we did counselling, we did personal development together and apart. We did so many things to help strengthen our relationship and for a time that worked. But I think that our generation and younger don't have that same resilience or perhaps accountability. I'm not sure what the word is, but they don't actually want to put the work in. They'd rather just swipe left and go, well, it's, that relationship It's, didn't it's work. the gratification. Um, that's that, that's you know, that. It's not working now. Let's think, go. Think, yeah. And in the phases of relationship, I think it's like the honeymoon phase or that limerence, that romantic phase lasts even right up to about 18 months. And a lot of people drop off the radar after that when this much deeper, more mature, more calm, less exciting love starts to develop. And for a lot of people that they'll bail out at that point and go, well, it's not exciting anymore. Therefore, I'm not in love. Therefore, this is not right for me. Whereas you know, the kind of beautiful domestic connection that Marie describes is indicative that that deep, mature love has evolved past just the right. thrill of, you right. know, a, and a, I that agree. early phase. 100%. I always say to people, you truly don't know someone to you've been with them for probably two years. Because yeah. the thing is, is when I first met my husband, I was like, listen, you're going to think I'm a crazy bitch because <laughs> I'm blunt, I'm honest, I'm I'm never going to change. I might grow up every year. I get more mature and stuff like that. 
but I am who I am and I'm, I'm never going to be fake about it. If you ask me a question, I'm going to tell you the truth. If you don't want to know the answer, you probably shouldn't ask, you know, and <laughs> he always said that that was something and his family members always said that was something they respected about me, that I was never a fake female. And I meet these girls and I'm like, mm, you know, and his friends always want to bring girls around me. Marie, see, see, test, tell me what you think. And I'm like, are you sure? Because I don't want you to get mad at me when I tell you, you probably shouldn't be with this girl. Like, so I think oh, it's no. like, because you can tell they're fake and, you know, and it's like, so I start talking to him and try to get him to tell me things. And, you know, and I'm just like, yeah, I'd probably tell him not to marry her. But, you know, the thing is, is that I feel like you that is the problem is you meet people who don't really know who they are. You know, well, I think they don't know who they are either, which doesn't be. Exactly. Well, you also Very become cute. different people when you're in that relationship. You know, you give up some things he gives up or the other person gives up some things. I'm not, you know, my dynamic well, is male, female. But, you know, it's it's a uh, it's you change to be in that relationship. You know, is it but is but it I, change? Is it change or is it compromise? compromise. Yeah, both yes, there's compromise. But I, I was think... going to say. Sorry, just one thought before I let you go. Go to Vera. Um, I think that Marie's pictures, i sorry I point. I always point. That old Italian in me. <laughs> the pictures you point, uh, post of you and your husband, they always make me feel good. Because even though I never found it, I do feel like you found it. That happily ever after. You guys are going to think I'm crazy, but uh, the first time I kissed him, I knew. And I just, uh, a shock went through my You're body. Crazy. I'm telling you, it's the truth. Ask, ask my best friend. I, she goes, what is it about him? You don't care about guys. You are a total man eater. You don't care about guys. You never want to get married. You're just this person who is like, oh, he's getting on my nerves. Bye. And I might punch you in the face too. So the thing is, is like, I just said it. I, and my mother always told me when you meet, they got me a magnet that says hanging out with all the wrong, wrong guys waiting for the right one to come along. She always said, you'll know when you know. And I was like, bull crap, whatever. You know, you're crazy lady. But the thing is, is it it was true. And, you know, um, he tells me every day, I love you more every day. He's like, I didn't think it was possible to even love you more than I love you now. He's like, but that's, he's like, I couldn't even imagine my life without you. So it, and I feel like, you know, it took, we went through a lot of crap to get to where we are. And I think that people maybe need to not seek revenge. And that's what I always tell these young kids. You know, if somebody makes a mistake, you guys should probably work through it. You shouldn't go sleep with someone because they slept with oh, someone. Yeah. yeah. The best oh, idea, yeah. you know, but that's, but you know, you live in that moment and you know, like we had to go through a lot of soul searching when he got someone else pregnant and we lived together and we had been together for six years. And it was because I was like, I had a teenage daughter. She was, you know, being rebellious, like wanting to do whatever she wants and breaking curfew. And it caused me and him to argue. And, you know, and a female friend of ours was like, oh, how are you guys doing? Oh, you're not doing good. Oops. Didn't mean to send you that nude. You know, that was kind of, the <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much what I went through. So, you know, and the thing is, is like, you know, it had to be, uh, I had to forgive him, you know, and had to move on. And we had to, you know, be honest with each other and no more secrets and you no more locked passcodes. Like I'm on his laptop right now. You know what I'm saying? Like there couldn't be any secrets. We had to tell each other the truth and, you know, we do. And that's. Well, isn't that kind of the point of a relationship? <laughs> right. No, but that's it, a choice. You know, you make the choice <laughs> to get past it or you don't, you know. And, and I've had a couple of different friends who have made the choice to forgive and move on. And I won't judge anything in their relationship. I wouldn't want them to judge anything in mine. And they are so happy. It's it's not, you know, it's the choices See, that they make. Uh, yeah. yeah, I think to me, like, sex is kind of sex, right? Like, I can forgive that. Like, if it was an emotional thing, I'd have a bigger issue with that. Because for me, like, what... Um, you know, I've been changing for somebody, right? Or are you changing? Are you growing or compromising? That was one of the things I was pissed off the most about when my marriage ended was like, I changed who I was for you. And then it hit me. 
Yeah. It wasn't his fault. It was my own. It had nothing to do with him. That's why you felt trapped. It was me. That's why you felt trapped. That I I didn't belong in. And neither did he. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not bagging on him. He, Mm -hmm. you know, I think felt the same thing. And we we tried to communicate. Like, you, you know, we did the love. I read the love language thing and realized that we were just two totally different people the way we came at love. And it just, I do think it could have worked had we put in the effort, but it, it just, it wasn't happening. Right. I think one of the common mistakes that we all make, um, and again, this is from a few books that I've read on this topic over the years, is that when we first fall in love with someone, often what happens is we have a projection about what we wish our partner were like. And then we meet someone that we feel some sort of spark with and it's like we take that blueprint and we try and force it onto that person and go, right, now I want you to meet every vision, need, behaviour of what I believe my perfect partner is. And if you don't fit it, then you're not doing your thing. Or the flip side to that is we try and turn ourselves into their perfect partner and we lose ourselves in the process. You know, so for me, having been through a marriage and a long-term relationship and casual relationships and monogamous relationships and open relationships, for me, it's absolutely about being totally authentic about who I am, what I need and what I expect or don't expect from, from anyone else. And, you know, right now at 45 with two kids, single parenting, I'm pretty happy. I actually don't need anyone to give me anything. Now it's about sharing my time with people that value me, that respect me, that think I'm a goddess, uh, (laughs) that are interesting to talk to, you know, tick, tick, tick. (laughs) Yes, I want want that. But I don't have this expectation that you're going to fit some outdated patriarchal, matriarchal Disney princess, prince model of what I think, you think, I think, you think, I'm, you know, you're supposed to be. So I think that's that's the trap, and I that I found that in my journey where I really matured is I let go of that false br- blueprint. I let go of the fantasy and went right. Who am I, and what do I actually need? And then let's see if we can attract that, you know, into my life. And a lot mm. of it comes down to I think people being afraid of failure. Do you know what I mean? They couldn't make. Uh, well, I couldn't make this marriage work. What does that say about me? I can't make yeah. this relationship. I can't make this person stay faithful to me. What's wrong with me? What have I done? Why am I failing when X, Y, Z, my best friend, my cousin Larry, everyone else can make it work? I think yeah. when you're when you can admit that it's okay to make mistakes and you can learn through from failure, you learn a lot through failure. And not even failure, just life. You know what I mean? You learn yeah. a lot through right. going through it and letting go of that fear of not meeting everyone else's expectations. I'm the only single person in my whole friendship group. Like Mm. they're all married with kids. Like they've, Mm. they've got the house, they've got the dream, but same. (laughs) I couldn't imagine. I couldn't imagine. Like I I don't, I don't have a nine to five job. Like I work in the arts. I do this. I work in retail. I could not imagine. I'm like, I'm ready to open a vein. Like, (laughs) don't you can't, you can't can't, like, I could, I couldn't be that like, I need to be able to do what I want to do. Right. But a lot of people see that as like, I don't own a house. I don't do this. I'm failing by some, I'm failing by some people's, you know, expectations. I think that's him. For me, it works. Are you happy? I think that's Are you happy? Yeah. Yeah, Of course I am. You're not failing because you're happy. Someone's happiness is not the next person's happiness and no one should judge how Mm. you choose to be happy. If I want to be married, and help raise my stepdaughter and that makes me happy my family is supportive because that's what makes me happy and i always Mm -hmm. want people to be happy and you know whatever choice you make and however you want to live your life that's all i would want for someone and that is a close friend of mine and i don't know what the the case there when i was younger the pressure to couple up was enormous the fact that i wasn't you know staying with any of these guys that my friends yes. were setting me up with was, you know, what's, why are you so picky? Why can't, he's a nice guy. It's like, uh, he has care. no idea what the theater is. And I spend my life in a theater, you know, 
why is he a nice guy? Because he won't beat me. That's, yeah. you know, that's not enough, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think I think some people set the bar really quite low. Yeah. And then they go, hooray, I'm coupled yeah. <laughs> with an abusive, I, co controlling, coercive yeah. or absent, you know, partner. But look, that's <laughs> here's a, one I he's prepared He's a total sociopath, but isn't he cute? <laughs> I was surrounded when I was younger by um, serial monogamous. They loved being in a relationship. Oh, they didn't really oh, care who oh, it yeah. was. So it's like the trash would just come in. And not, I mean, they weren't even always trash bags, but... It was just like, you deserve better. Like, you're not actually happy. You're miserable in this, but you just need to have somebody because you're so codependent. And it was always mind-blowing to me, right? And then I realized, though, throughout my marriage, that I definitely became partially codependent because it was just the security of having somebody else there. And it, it took, you know, a month or so, I guess it, Everything hit the fan and I realized I'm going to be raising kids on my own. I have these businesses. What the hell do I do now? Mm -hmm. That was a big shock. To me. You know, like my whole life world was, had exploded. I had to walk away from the businesses because I couldn't work 15 hours a day and, and have three little kids and have an eight month old baby. It wasn't going to work on my own. I had to change my whole life and I'm, so grateful that I didn't spend all that time in therapy because, you know, doing radio for the first time around, we did it five nights a week, you know, and we had multiple shows on, so we were always doing that. It was always a problem, you know, going to conventions with the Power Ranger troop. It was always a problem, you know, it just, it, it and I felt like, okay, well, I'm going to give this up because I choose my marriage. And it didn't work. I was, it just doesn't, you're forcing yourself into something that, and he's a great guy, you know? I'm happy he's happy. He, he got right into another relationship and that works for him. And for me, everybody, his mom, you know, my life, still, are you talking to anybody? Are you seeing anybody? What am I gonna do with three badass kids? <laughs> like I don't have time for this. Like you yeah. know, it's hard enough to find somebody you click with, and I, I definitely do when I'm around somebody want to be entertained. I don't want to be the entertainment. I kind of like to be the quiet one. And so when we're spending the time together, if it's not a stimulating conversation, like it's not gonna work. And then we have the whole sex aspect of. I don't know. Well, I really just want to bang one dude or one girl. Like, I kind of want to just. We're, get, we're gonna get to that. We're gonna the get flavor to that. of life. But sex requires so much trust. Yeah. You know, you know, you gotta really trust somebody before you're willing to just be that totally open. I mean, maybe not so much in the gay world. <laughs> Stop. <I do. laughs> it's a different thing. It really is. Like getting it is. Well, I know, but. <laughs> You know, they're like you just you get on an app and hook up with somebody random. Well, yeah, yeah. they have. You that's know, a show in it. That's really yeah. a show in itself. <laughs> but it's, it's a, it's a <laughs> being able to being able to separate sex and romance is a different. Yeah, you know, I, I guess a, the straight is, people with ca casual sex. Mm. I think I resonate casual. a lot with what Jeffrey says. I think it's a really different energy when you're when you're a single person with kids and when you're without. So the, the decisions that you make around who you're going to date or be in a relationship are totally governed by, is this going to work for my family as well? And like for me, the reason I've made the decision not to be in a committed relationship with anyone other than, you know, the father of my children, we're, we're happily separated, is that I'm like fierce mama bear, you know, I want to protect the energy of what I have with my girls. I want them to feel that our family life is consistent and then you know it's been my choice to go well independently when they're not with me then I've got time to do what I want with whoever I want but I'm fiercely protective around that um, zone and it's not to say that it's I, I would rule out the possibility of getting in a committed relationship again but that person has to jump through a hell of a lot more hoops right? before right. I will consider. Because you have to trust them with your female. That's right. Because yeah. I, I've got two <laughs> girls. That's, you know, red flag oh. city. I'm very fiercely protective, you know, around that energy. Um, and 
yeah, like I would, and, and look, this decision is not for everybody, but my girls are almost 10 now. I'd rather wait another 10 years till my kids are out of the house and then maybe I'll go, all right, now I'm, now well, I'm ready to re, it's repartner, you know, because then it doesn't affect them and I can yeah. fuck it up yeah. and it's not going to fuck them up, you know. But exactly. right now yeah. they're my first loves. That's it. Everyone else has to play right. second field to that, you know. And so that's why I resonate with what you're saying, Jeffrey. It's like, you know, you've got your tribe. That's your that's your love. That's your yeah. marriage. Yeah. That's your family energy. And if we find time outside of that, well, that's a different thing. Well, and I think what you said too about the finding time, I watched it, Mia Farrow, the documentary that was on HBO. Oh my God, one how can you things, trust anybody after watching that? One of the things she said <laughs> in the beginning was, Woody did not want kids. He didn't want anything to do with them. And she said, well, why can't I just date somebody outside of my children? Like I have my life with my kids and that's, and then that was, it started as something that was separate and her, her time and I'm like, oh, well that maybe I could do, but I'm like, wait, what time would that be? Like, <laughs> you know what I, mean? like, I don't have a nanny anymore, you know, 10, like fifteen to eleven. Right. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, that's not gonna have that. Like, you know, you get fifteen <laughs> minutes every three days, maybe. I, As, yeah, especially I think it's interesting. Especially you guys have kids, but you also have careers that are fairly like in especially katie when yeah. you were when you like you stepped away from music to have your kids really didn't you i i did i did for a few years that's true but then i stepped away from everything you know yeah like exactly really, the first five to, years to, to put that focus yeah to put that yeah, focus they, on them before they started school you know i was only ever working one or two days a week and the rest of my time um you know i was with them and i was single parenting for you know for most of um their lives although again thankfully i have a great co-parenting relationship with my ex even though our relationship with each other um Good. you know we gave it a few goes but we didn't uh, we didn't get there but i'm thankful that you know we're we're great great co-parents but yeah it's i mean amazing. now that's the other thing you know yeah i love my kids but um my business is my second love my career you know because that's my authentic self when i'm not doing events i'm not doing clients or doing podcasts or doing interviews <laughs> or doing, you know and then the kids come home and it's like again Jeffrey's like, what time exactly am i supposed to have a committed relationship in between <laughs> right. all that you know so um yeah for the foreseeable future that's that's not for me but you know i'm all for it for people that can find it and you know marie's story is inspiring and, you know, such a testament to the fact that with work, real deep inner work, that's how you make these relationships work. But I think also, you know, as Jeffrey's highlighted, when there's just, or even as Vera's highlighted, when there's just that mismatch, sometimes you can't get over that. Like with my husband and I, we were together for 10 years. It was horribly abusive, but we, but then we worked through it. He did an anger management course. I did anger management courses. We did personal development courses. We had our relationship in such a sweet spot at, at about the 10 year mark. We're like, wow, I, maybe I'll, I'll, this will work, you know, I'll get to grow old with this person. And then we hit the final unresolvable roadblock, which was at 29 and he was 39. And for 18 months, I tried to get pregnant. And it wasn't because I wasn't fertile, it's because he wouldn't fuck me. That's a problem. <laughs> mm, that's a problem. It is. And then, and he just would not, he just he just wasn't mature enough to have kids and my internal clock was ticking and I'm like, man, we've been together for 10 years. He's like, oh, but we need to go to this medical conference. So we need to go to this thing. I'm like, how many more parties and lunches and dinners and overseas trips do you need to have before you actually just change and have a family? Because that's what I'm in this for. And I thought you were too. And if you're saying now that that's changed, Gee, it's been a great 10 years, but this is not something I can resolve. And it wasn't something I was prepared to compromise on. And I think, you know, whether or not you want to have kids or not, that's a real deal breaker. You really need mm -hmm. to be on the same page. It doesn't yeah. matter what side of the page you're on. If you're a couple and you decide not to have kids and fucking travel the world, it's amazing, you know, do that. Um, but, you know, for me, that was really, really sad. And I, I resonated with what you said, Stephen, earlier, that, the most devastating thing for me in that relationship ending was that I felt I'd failed, that I'd made the wrong yeah, choice or that absolutely. I hadn't done the work or I don't know, that, that I had failed somehow. And I, but I managed to reconcile that and go, no, look, I just, who he was then and who I was then 
has changed. And unfortunately, you know, we and it was working for oh, sort of <laughs> <Seven years. laughs> uh, until it didn't. And, right. you know, and then I had to let that go because the other choice would have been to stay and either not have kids at all or wait another 10 years. And call me stubborn, but I wasn't prepared to do that. So, you know. Well, exactly. I actually never felt like I failed because I always felt like I was in the driver's seat. I, yeah. I walked away from every relationship I've had. It, it came to a point where I'm not going to put up with this treatment. Yeah. This isn't working the way I expected it to, you know. You have your life, I have my life, no hard feelings. And I really do mean that when I say that to departed lovers or friends, you know. I I have no hard feelings. You know, you're welcome back in my life as a friend, but this isn't working for me. So I never felt like I failed. I always felt like I was in the driver's seat. And yeah, I, well, I think, think that that's really people, empowering to hear that. A lot of people didn't understand that I was the driver. They're like, oh, they split. Is she okay? Yeah, I'm fine. I, I made a choice. You know, yes, I'm sad that this didn't work out the way I expected it. Yes, I'm sad that I'm not having children, you know, um, but I'm not, I made those choices. I walked away. I, was like, I should I'm have called you more. Treated, I'm not <laughs> going to be treated this way, or I'm not getting what I need out of this relationship. So I did feel empowered enough to walk away, you know? So there wasn't it's interesting feeling when uh, that um that knowing when to walk away moment is very interesting or knowing when it's not going to work. I'm going to throw a bit of a, a statistic at you, which surprised me um, in 2020 as of February 2020 last year, obviously, approximately 39 percent of marriages in America ended in divorce. Yeah. And I, I think now, the, stats, a lot of, the stats in Australia are about 50 uh, 50, I believe. Yeah. They're, yeah, they, yeah. So yeah. I think COVID was definitely <laughs> that was just <laughs> before COVID. COVID had definitely had to put things under a pressure cooker for a lot of people oh, who God, are in those yeah. relationships that you know weren't working. It's either put up or shut up when you're stuck together twenty four hours a day, seven days a week. Um, there was a lot. There was a lot here in the media about domestic violence at the, at the time because domestic violence isolates people already and then they're isolated again like um <laughs> and lockdown never ended here in new york <laughs> and the lockdown never ends in america unless you're in florida <laughs> yeah come to florida. florida yay uh, obviously that is that should always be you know a non-negotiable your safety the safety of your children your health and your mental health but there are other aspects in relationships that seem to drive people apart. So the idea of having to have this one person, the monogamy, that covers your spiritual, physical, mental needs, is that outdated? I mean, if some, you might not click Hell with yes. someone emotionally, but you might have, <laughs> as Jeffrey said, an emotional affair hurts just as much but see what you're, affair. what you're referring to, and I think it's important that we get clear on what the definition of monogamy actually is here. Because yep. what you just implied, you used the word monogamy and then you followed with finding someone that meets your physical, emotional, spiritual, financial needs, right? Yeah. That's yep. not monogamy. Yep. That's, yep. that's, yep. that's, yep. I'm that's getting, the I'm, concept of the one. Yeah, I'm getting, yeah. Okay, so continue. Yep. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm getting, I was getting there. <laughs> so if, if that is several people, if it's not, do you know what I mean? If you're not with one person and that is your thing. So I'm, I'm trying to, now you've, you've stuck me <laughs> up on wood. You, you fucked me right up. I was on a roll. <laughs> Katie, he does this every show, every show. He's like, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Just shoot. Okay. Get there. I and have a lot to stuff. Shut up. Where are we going? Where are you Take trying? a breath, darling. Continue. Do so you if you're married to someone. Up. Yes. Married someone, yes? Marriage, you're expected to be monogamous with that one person. If that's the agreement. If, yes, yes, socially. So does that agreement change in, in the modern world is what I'm saying? Should it be reconsidered? That There's a whole group of if, swingers if and both, that's yes, when they if, have parties. If both, they, if they both parties. If both parties believe that, is that a failure of monogamy though? 
It's not, right? Because you're I, choosing. You're you both think- deciding that I love this person, but I don't have to stay with this. Like, this person is not my universe. Yeah, look, I, I think this concept that we have, that our generation and older has around, you know, and I, I, I call it the Disney princess syndrome because it is a relatively mm. new concept, right? Let's go back, let's say, even 100 years, all right? Married, getting married was a very different, very different reasons why you got married. Fundamentally, if we talk about before women could vote, before women could work, all right, let's look at that generation. Why did they get married? They got married for financial security. They got married for social acceptance. What those women did not, and they got married so that they could have children if that's what they wanted, right, which was kind of expected for everybody. What they didn't expect was to sit around having cocktails and chats with their husband, right? They had girlfriends. They had girlfriends for that, okay? Um, They maybe didn't even expect their partner to be a lover. Not all marriages were sexual ones. They were marriages of financial or social convenience and maybe it was perfectly normal for that woman or man to have a lover on the side. And this was normal. This was the unspoken truth that was accepted. So it's only really been bizarrely in the last 100 years or perhaps 50 years that suddenly, you know, the terms metrosexual and the soulmate and this and that, that we developed this bizarre fantasy that not only was the one supposed to be something that we were looking for, but that they were going to meet every need that we had, sexual, social, spiritual, Thank you. emotional. This is what I was going for. <laughs> and frankly, I don't want to say that that's outdated. I think it was never the right, I think it's always been a fantastical thing because that's not how it's always been. That that illusion, that phenomenon has been a very recent Bizarre thing, and I do kind of blame Disney a little bit because it kept reaffirming this magical myth of the prince or the princess that gets saved or saves and the one and everything's happy ever after. Well, Disney um, and every other musical theatre genre. Yeah, you know, and, and look, I'll, I'll qualify I by Disney. saying I think, I think I for, some people, <laughs> for some people it does happen. Yeah, like yeah. Marie and 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 many others out there, I'm sure. And for them, I go, you know what? My heart just sings for you. I'm happy for you. But I believe personally that's a minority situation. And I think that long term relationships are much better served, whether or not you agree on physical sexual monogamy or not. I think it's actually more sustainable to go, okay, so my husband or my wife or my partner is the person that I choose only to have sex with. But I'm going to get my social needs met by my friends. So I'm going to get my societal needs well, met by my family. I'm going to get my personal spiritual needs met by my career. You know, there's all these other ways that we can feel whole as a person that don't require us to become codependent with another one person. That was something you, I think That's that was always sense. a point of contention. Uh, my one girlfriend that was always serial monogamous, just picking whatever scraps came along, you know, we were talking one day and how her, whoever it was, no matter what was going on, that person was always first before her kids, before herself. And then she's and you, she's like, your friends are more important than your husband. I'm like, because those are the people that I have the most intimate relationships with. Like we talked about our sex lives. We talked about what we liked, what we didn't like. But for some odd reason, that did not translate over into my marriage. It's like we didn't have those uncomfortable conversations that I could have with my girlfriends. And it, yeah. it definitely strained the relationship. Ten years was a very long time to be in a place where you couldn't open up to each other. We didn't tell each other what we really wanted. You know, I'd say, what's your fantasy? You would say nothing. <laughs> Like, and then I'd be pissed because you're lying to me. <laughs> like, why? What is the big deal? You know, and then as I gained weight it's shit or whatever, and it just, it turned things into much more of a problem than they needed to be, you know? And I, that's something too that I learned after that. Okay, whoever I'm with next, regardless of what the relationship looks like, if it's open, if it's monogamous, whatever, I have to have that. Like, if I, if we can talk about everything and be on the same page or not be on the same page, but work through it, 
then this isn't going to work. And th- I, I, the thing that freaks me out the most, I, I don't know. If, if somebody you meet in like your, their perspective and they're like batshit crazy about they want to be in a relationship <laughs> so quickly, I scream and run. Like it's my first warning sign. I got to go. I can't. I can't, <laughs> you can't do this. Like, so Jeffrey, yeah. you should do this. My friend, she tells her boyfriend, you should think. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> she tells. She tells her. Oops. Okay. That way. <laughs> speaker. That they call it puppy love. <laughs> There's a couple in the neighborhood down here. Okay. Oh, so God. my friend, my friend says to her boyfriend all the time. Now ask yourself this: If you do that, is that going to get your dick sucked? And if the answer is no, then you shouldn't do it. And that's how she gets her boyfriend. Too. If he's going to do something dumb, she always says to him, now ask yourself this. And I'm like, you know, Becky Joe, that's ingenious. Because like, <laughs> you know, because Nate's like, yeah, no, I think you're probably, and she's like, and it'll probably be a while before I do it again. So you probably shouldn't do that. So then he behaves. So that's a good, that's a good one for you, Jeffrey. That's Nothing like a bit of sexual bribery, huh? Yeah. I love yeah, this yeah, cock, yeah. I love this cock sucking currency you got going on in your community. No, I'm, I'm, oh, I'm, okay. I, I work at a I work at a, a, a club, like a not a club, but it's like a restaurant right. it's a it good into time. a nightclub. <laughs> yeah. And Je- believe me, Jeffrey loves it. But it's one of the top one hundred clubs in the United States and naughty. Well, has been there forever and it's just crazy and it's known all over the world and it's just a fun time but we have to laugh about things because yeah. it's hard to work there because it's Steve, just- maybe we should start sending the new people the episode of marie talks about taking the shot to the eye before they yeah. the end of the yeah. show so they really I know. know what they're getting into you, Come d- to the eyeballs, me. always a bit of a, I like yeah. had a hive. I had a hive on my eye from like my makeup or something. Marie's They're allergic to everything. Yeah, <laughs> I'm allergic to everything. Everything. So I think the main takeaway that we can get from our conversation today is that a lot of a success within a relationship requires you being honest and truly knowing yourself and your needs. So then you can be authentic with the person that you choose to be authentic with. It doesn't mm-hmm. always have to, it doesn't always have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be the one. It can be the two or the 47th or the, you know, the, the, five the, fi- the five and the six, if you're into that kind of thing. One of the most marriages I ever saw was an open marriage. They've been committed to each other and their yeah. marriage for 50 years, but they've Amazing. agreed to see other people. That's the thing. If both, if, if both yeah. people genuinely want the same thing, whether that's monogamy or not monogamy, then it works. You know? It's only when one person lies to the other trying to do the right, right. thing, then it's always going to be flawed. There's so a would we say, club in my area, a big group. <laughs> yeah. Would we say that in our experience that a successful relationship requires self-knowledge, and honesty mm-hmm. yeah. as the uh-huh. cornerstones. Yeah. Look at I mean, I, the divorce was the best thing that ever happened to me because that's when I really started figuring out who I was. I mean, I had to stop and not look at what he did, but focus on like, well, where did I fuck up? What do I? And it was a great learning. People don't get that. They think I'm weird when I say that. I'm, like, I'm so sorry you're divorced. I'm like, don't be. I'm I'm okay with it. Like I'm I'm happy oh, for yeah. him. We're yeah. I, we're. Oh, she's- Poor Vera, she's single. Yeah. No, I'm okay with it. You know what? I mean, yeah, like, it was rough for the first couple months, but it was not really about him. It was about a life exploding and and ch- change, you know? And people don't get that. They're like, oh, oh, the fat dude with three kids that they had, he adopted on his own and his husband left. And I'm like, that's not what happened. Like, it's okay. Right. He, we, they were still foster kids. It, couldn't you know he had to go like he didn't walk out on them like it it was just what happened and it's it's i think it's more hard dealing with other people other people's expectations are always going to be worse expectations of what my life should look like yes you know yeah yeah, Vera, how dare you not be rattling around a gothic mansion with cobwebs everywhere going oh you know what the bad news is it wasn't the ghost. My refrigerator really did shit the bed. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> upsetting. <laughs> upsetting. We thought Vera was haunted last week, but it just turned out she got <laughs> bleeding Jesus. white goods. Your vibrator didn't shit the bed. No, <laughs> that's fine. 
That's oh, important. Dear. It's important. Well, thank you guys for sharing today. I think it's a very different, uh, like very different for us to sit down and be honest and like speak our truth or or our our life experience because hopefully that can help the people watching feel okay. I think in this modern time, there's a lot of especially with social media, there's a lot of expectation being thrown about. If your life doesn't match the Instagram story or, you know, someone's so-and-so, then you're a failure. And I think the biggest thing today we've learnt that failure is okay no matter what. I think it's about finding your own normal. Yeah. yeah. And yes. then if you and if and you if <laughs> and if you want to be partnered to find mm-hmm. someone else that has the same kind of idea of normal as you, you know. And, and, and then there's a place to begin. Of other people's normal. You know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, it's it's okay for Marie to have a happily ever after and me not. I, I'm yeah. happy for Marie. You but know, you're having I, a different happily ever after, Vera. It doesn't right. necessarily I'm depend on it. Ever after. Well, Vera, if you want to come and clean up after him and deal with him <laughs> farting and by all means, because guess what? Disney princes didn't fart, okay? So they lied. They all lied to us. <laughs> they, they, they weren't lied. messy. They didn't make messes. So yeah. and Jeffrey knows I'm OCD. So that's what we, that's probably what we fight about the most is my OCD and cleaning. So the best thing about being single is Every pair of dirty socks on the floor are mine. Every dirty dish yes. is mine. Yes. I don't have to answer to anybody if I don't want to do them. And if I have to do them tomorrow, that's my choice, you know? Uh-huh. His, family kids, drain, yeah. and his family <laughs> thought it'd be a good idea to bring him a bunch of big red. I don't know if you guys know what that is. It's a red soda that stains. Yeah. And I have beige carpet. Yeah. <laughs> Fun to kill them. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. That's the thing. I listen to p- married people talk about their relationship, and I'm like, hey, this is why I stay single. <laughs> <laughs> you all so fucking single. Whatever you hate choose to be, no. whatever you choose to be out there is fine. Really, is yeah, our general absolutely. message. We thank everyone for watching with us today and being with us today, and we'll be back soon with some other big questions. But if you have something that you'd like us to talk about, please drop us an email at myuncensoredradio at gmail dot com. And then, until then. Back. Baby, yeah. let's talk about I think, you. I think it's me. definitely going to be a sex <laughs> topic coming merch. up. When, you gotta, wait, when, what's Jeffrey? Oh, like yeah, just merch. Jeff oh, Emmett nice. for some yeah, merch. There you are. Wait, wait. There Check there. out Katie oh. Underwood on Spotify. She's a busy girl. Yeah. And we will see you all again on Friday for UCR Live. Until then, stay First safe, stay happy, and be loved. Bye, kids. <laughs> Bye. Get the-